And now we turn to a story on education. The number of advanced placement exams Indiana students are taking each year has nearly doubled since 2008. Those who get a passing score not only get a step closer to earning the state's honors high school diploma, they earn college credit. But while the number of students enrolling in AP courses has increased, Kyle Stokes reports the percentage of Indiana students passing AP exams has slipped. 25.2. Okay. Yeah. For advanced placement teachers, the off season is short. As your AP teacher, I'm your coach. Just weeks after this year's classes end and students take their tests. You're my team. I have the playbook. They start drawing up a game plan for next year's right, opponent, Four. the AP wow. exam. So we're going to look at this as this is our opposition. So we need to figure out how we can tackle that. Get a nine, three, three, one, fifth. 10 months before this year's AP tests, no, about 300 teachers wins. from across the Midwest spent Pardon. part of this past summer at Ball State going over the X's and O's of AP courses. It's part of a summer institute where teachers learn how to teach college level classes to high school students. There's guidance for teachers who are new to advanced placement or for teachers like Danielle Tooley, who's taught AP English literature for several years but this year, she's adding another course, AP English Language, to her teaching load. We need to do what we can to provide practical experiences for our students for them to be successful in some kind of post-secondary program, whether it's a traditional four-year college or what have you. Here's how it works. Students sign up for an AP course in the fall, and each May, the College Board administers national AP exams. If students earn a three or better on the test's five-point scale, they've passed, guaranteeing students credit at Indiana's public colleges. Educators say it's one way to make college a little more affordable and seem a little more accessible. We're making them aware that they are ready for college and careers. Many students don't know that they are, and they never had a dream that they were gonna go to school. But once they see that they can be successful in this level, they find a way to make it. Indiana lawmakers want more students taking AP exams. They've tripled the amount of state money available this year and next for AP testing. State dollars now cover the cost of any AP test in a math or science subject. The number of exams students have taken nearly doubled between 2008 and 2012, but the percentage of advanced placement exams on which students earned passing scores of 3, 4, or 5 hasn't kept pace. Less than half of the exams received high enough scores to earn college credit for the Indiana students who took them in 2012. If they want to count AP courses toward academic honors on their high school diploma, students have to pass the class and they do have to take the final AP test. But they don't have to score well on the test. And that has been, um, I think, a less than well thought through policy coming out of the state. Another result, one of the last countries in the world to still have polio. AP European history teacher Matt Hoagland says he hears a lot of complaints from fellow advanced placement instructors that more students are showing up in their classes, but they aren't all ready for AP level work. A significant number of kids are taking the AP class and they're learning a lot of good stuff from that, and that's fine. But then they're going and taking the test and they're not putting any effort into it at all. And so there's been an explosion of ones out of five that have really lowered scores. I'm truly hopeful and believe that what we may just simply be dealing with are growing pains. Derek Rettelman with the Indiana Chamber of Commerce says it's not time to hit the panic button yet. He's encouraged to see increases in the number of students willing to take on more challenging coursework. We are getting more students to enroll in AP and that's a good thing because it's it gets them into more rigorous coursework. Um, but uh, it appears that we need to do more work to, to achieve the higher pass rates that we all want. Look to schools with successful advanced placement programs, Rettelman says. There, Indiana educators might find game plans for boosting the state's pass rates on AP exams. But there are other opportunities for students to earn college credit in high school besides AP. International Baccalaureate, or IB, is one option that offers a similar year-end exam for college credit. Then there are dual credit offerings where high schools partner with colleges to offer courses for both high school and college credit. 
Now here in the studio is Mike Beam, who runs the Advanced College Project. It's a dual credit program Indiana University offers to more than 100 schools across the region. Thanks for being here. So students who pass a course through your program actually get IU credit and a transcript, correct? That's correct. And, uh, and with more than 350 schools, 4,000 students, I believe, uh, Kyle passed along some information here. How do you make sure that all the courses um, actually that you're teaching are worth the IU credit that the students are getting? That's a great question. Well, actually, the Advanced College Project is in about 160 schools across the state, and we'll enroll about 12,000 students this, this school year. We've worked for the past 30 years, honestly, with high schools, and what we do is we, we uh, train very high-qualified high school teachers um, to deliver specifically an IU course. These teachers spend a lot of time with IU faculty, IU faculty who have um, either direct uh, control or instruct the course on campus themselves. And so what the high school teacher is doing in the high school setting is delivering calculus or composition or U.S. history. So it's not an equivalency with the ACP program like AP is. It's actually delivery of an IU course just in a different setting. Now the AP has kind of a be-all, end-all test um, at the end. Does the dual credit also have something like that at any point? The, the, the course, because it's an IU course, may have an end of a course assessment. Let's say uh, if, uh, calculus is a great example. Um, when we deliver a calculus course at Batesville High School or Bloomington South, uh, the math teacher in that, teaching that, that version of M211 will use the same on-campus midterm and final exams that we use in calculus. So in that case, it's very similar in terms of a test. But other courses on, on IU campus that wouldn't have an end of a course assessment that's one be-all test like AP, we wouldn't, rep we wouldn't invent that in the high school setting. The high, school's, the high school course, when it's offered in the high school, our intention is to deliver as we would on campus. So if there's no omnibus big test at the end of the course on the campus, there's not one when it's offered in the high school. So then is it up to the discretion of the teacher? To a very small degree, the teacher is the teacher designs the syllabus in conjunction with the IU faculty members. So the syllabus must match an, what would be an IU syllabus on campus. There's some variation. Schools meet much more many more days than we do on campus, but but primarily it's the IU syllabus. 